Well, I'm here in Ballynockan uh, in McAfee's field. Ballynockan is an area that's well known for the number of beautiful dry stone walls on the landscape. Of course, it's a hilly mountainous area. There was plenty of stone available both on the surface of the land and from the local quarries. So, John, maybe we'll have a, a closer look at this particular wall. Uh, the first thing I notice is that the masons who built this wall had a lot of skill because they, they kept very nice uh, joints on the stone. Can you tell us about something about the masons that worked on this wall? Or do you know anything about it? Well, Eddie, the, a lot of the, the masons who would have worked on this wall would have been from the quarries. They would have been hand-making building jobs in Dublin from around the 1820s on. So you can see this, how squared the, the joints are. So these would have been offcuts of building jobs, I'm sure. And they could have used these in the wall so they had good access to good material. And the upper sections of the wall here, what they call those tall pieces were scantlings. You called them scantlings earlier on. And I know it's very, three very distinct holes here in it. Can you explain what these three holes are? Well, what they used to do here, Eddie, was they get a flat chisel and they would put the chisel on the stone and as they would tap it with the hammer they would revolve it the chisel in their hand and they would bore the holes into the rock okay. and then what they would do is they'd get a, a piece of timber and beat it into these holes and that was their way of fixing the wire for the fence to the granite rather than wrapping wire all around the post they had a nice clean area to put in a, a little pin to pin the wire for yeah the, for it the was a great fence. idea yeah. it was a great idea yeah. and of course when the timber plug got wet, it swelled yeah. and it got tighter yeah. in, the, in yeah. the stone as well. Now another thing I notice about, or feature that I notice about the, these pillars is that there's markings here along the, the edges, the corners. Can you explain why or what the marks well, are? When they would be quarrying out a piece of stone, especially a piece that length there, which is over six foot. Yeah. What they used to do is they'd go along with a, with a pickaxe, but it was a special kind of stone pickaxe. It was tempered on each end and they would pick out a kind of dish hole all along and then another mason would come along what he called bottoming out and he would deepen that down because you can imagine that one being one full stone yeah and then would put in steel wedges all along and then they would tap the steel right. wedges until they split the stone into that shape that they were looking for to form the so he would bottom out these holes yeah. with a, a chisel yeah. or a punch a punch, yeah. A punch. Yeah. yeah okay as we move along the wall, uh, another feature of the wall, apart from the scantlings, is this uh, niche in the wall here. This would have been a, a sheep shelter, or possibly it was uh, something like the Aran Gates on the Aran Islands. It was a temporary stone gate because there were no, there were no gates on these fields. No. So if you are moving sheep, and it's a sheep uh, rearing, countryside here if you're moving sheep from one area to, to the other you need it to have easy access from one field to the next field and the way they seem to have done it here was they built a niche into the wall and just built a single layer of stone on one side of that that could be easily dismantled mantled to let the sheep through would you say that was the reason for this particular I, I niche would, I, here I'd imagine because these fields might have been landlocked and then families, you know, one brother taking over a field from another, they would have had this for easy movement of sheep through, possibly. And then in later years, maybe if somebody took over the ownership of all of it or the family separated, they would close off the other side of the, the niche that's in the wall there. Yeah, it, it, it looks like that was the idea for it. Uh, there was also a second reason maybe why these uh, niches were built into uh, there would be a lot of snow here in County Wicklow yeah. and if there was a snow drift here on the hillside the sheep would naturally go to where they would get a bit of shelter and of course that was at the wall and if there was a hole in the wall there was even better shelter so uh, I think that the, sh the sheep would have been gravitating towards all of these niches and there are a number of niches in this wall and in a snow drift, rather than the farmer having to dig up snow looking for his sheep, he knew if he went to where the niche was on the wall, he would find the sheep. I think that was another reason for that. 
But down here in the corner, we're coming to a different type of feature here in the corner between the two walls. It's a different niche than the one that we looked at earlier on. Can you explain something, please, about this? Well, what this, this is, Eddie, because it's such a smaller niche, what they used to do back, back in those years was they used to chase the hares and the rabbits out of the field. And as they ran into the corner of the wall here, the only place to escape was through this hole. So there would be another guy on the far side of the wall with a hessian sack, and he would catch the rabbits and the hares as they crossed through the wall. The Terminator. <laughs> yeah, and that's what their dinner was. That's the fresh meat they got for that day was through that, catching them through that little niche there. Yeah, it was a great idea. And of course, there was no grains of pellets or lead or anything else to be no, no. taken from the hare after they had captured it. So thanks for that, Sean. Thank you. Uh, this wall, compared to the wall that we've just walked down along, is a different type of wall. This is a consumption wall. And consumption walls were built for land clearance purposes. Uh, we're here on the hilly area, as I've mentioned earlier. There was a lot of surface stone. And the, the best way to get rid, collect and get rid of the stone was to build it into a wall. And because there was so much stone available, they built uh, what was known as a consumption wall. It consumed a lot of, a lot of stone. What width would you say this wall is, John? I'd and say at the top, Eddie, it's definitely seven strong feet wide at the top. And uh, all the way along the field there, I don't know how many meters really we're looking at there. Yeah. Length, we'd be looking at 200 meters Easily, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and it's yeah it's definitely seven or eight feet wide yeah. it's more or less plumb but it may be a, bit, a little bit wider in the bottom yeah. and of course we don't know it maybe we are standing on rough ground here at the moment but there could be two feet of this Easily two feet, yeah. buried in yeah. the ground yeah. so that's great it just shows that uh dry stone wall in was practiced all over the country. We're going from Galway to Wicklow and we've been in other parts of the country. Uh, the technique in all areas is basically the same and uh, Ballynockin is a particularly area of some fine examples of dry stone walls. So thanks Sean for all that.